A year ago, this young Malian, Jala Haroun, returned home from the Ivory Coast. He lives in the village of Gorma Rarus in the desert just south of the River Niger. People here are farmers, but in recent years, drought and conflict have resulted in reduced harvests and a mass exodus. And not just in Gorma Rarus. Until recently, most of northern Mali's young people were migrating to cities and neighbouring countries, such as the Ivory Coast, Niger and Ghana, which has had a devastating impact on communities here, leaving villages and towns like Diallo's populated largely by children and the elderly. But now Diallo has come back because he has hope for a future here, something desperately needed for the country, says a local representative from the Ministry of Agriculture. We all know youth is the future of a country. If they are unemployed, they're always at risk of drifting and of creating problems. So to try and occupy these youths, to try to find work for these youngsters, is one of the most important things for a country. Shortly after returning to Mali, Diallo heard about a government project created to do just that. Supported by the UN's International Fund for Agricultural Development, the project offers training and work opportunities to local youth. Diallo bought a motor pump and was helped to develop a small business growing fodder, which he stores and sells to his neighbours. I've managed to feed our animals, and we can put some to one side in a storehouse. Then, at a certain time, I sell it. So with that money, I can cover all our needs. For many young people here, the chance to earn a living is reason enough to come home and stay. Five years ago, nearly all of these young people would have left. This young man, Hama Agisa, is another returnee. He was recently trained as a builder during the project's construction of a new irrigation system, which links the River Niger to his village. <laughs> The impact for me, as head of a family with children, is that now I have animals, a house and work tools. So for me, I'd have to say it is going well. And as more young people find employment, the local economy also benefits. But in the end, it's the presence of the young people themselves that spells hope for Mali's future. I'm Declan McCormack for Hungry Planet. The world's newest country is facing a crisis. Like too many South Sudanese, Nyadeng Aiwak is struggling to feed her family of 15 this year. Once a week, she walks here to Malakal from her village to buy food, a journey that takes several hours each way. She makes the trip because food prices are a bit lower here. Families in villages like this one in Upper Nile State would normally have been able to grow enough sorghum here to get them through for several months, at least to the end of the year. But this year, because the rains were so bad, they came late and were very erratic, they haven't had any harvest at all. So they're dependent on whatever food they can buy from the market. The looming food crisis in South Sudan is the result of more than just erratic rains and failed crops. The country gained its independence from Sudan in July. Since then, border issues between the two countries have disrupted the traditional commercial trading patterns, causing critical food shortages in the markets. And the need for WFP's food assistance is growing. On top of the problems caused by scarcity and high food prices, more than 300,000 people have been forced from their homes by conflict in the last year. In addition to that, with independence, hundreds of thousands of South Sudanese have voluntarily returned to the country from Sudan. All of this means that more than two million people will need food assistance in 2012. And it is critical for WFP to be able to get that food into place as quickly as possible, because large parts of the country become virtually inaccessible once the rainy season starts in March. Gaza. 
تراشد معسكرات For hundreds of years, farmers in the dry highlands of northern Ethiopia have been dependent on cereal production. But the area is frequently hit by severe drought and has been haunted by famine. This was also the story of Berheteka and his family, living at a steep mountain farm 2,700 meters above sea level. But four years ago, his life changed. The Government Bureau of Agriculture and the Food and Agriculture Organization, FAO, recognized his lack of water and supplied him with a water tank and equipment for irrigation. I get the um, knowledge or the training from FAO. They give me support in the biomaterial and they support me by the technical and the material and everything. Now his farm has transformed. And here I have uh, grow apple, plum, apricot, almond, and uh, such like this another, and also from the vegetables, cabbage, carrot. Further south, in Rea Valley, this tropical fruit nursery is run by the government and FAO. Various seedlings, newly introduced in Ethiopia, are grown and sold to local farmers. There is here. Good morning, Deribe. Good morning. I need to buy avocado and mango. 15 avocado seedlings and 15 mango seedlings. Each seedling costs 15 beer. 10,000 farmers buy high quality seedlings from FAO supported nurseries. The farmers are really taking over these activities with enthusiasm. And as we said, you know, fruit for life. The fruit uh, accompanying you for all your life, giving you fruits that you can sell and you can consume at home. The papaya will be cut to be replaced by the new one. Okay. Meno Gebayo is one of the farmers getting guidance from the project. He started producing papaya. Then he and his wife, Alem Nesh, moved on to producing seedlings, which they now sell to other farmers in the area. It is such a big change. I am supporting my family with the money I get from selling seedlings, and now my three children are going to school. We are supporting at least 300 farmers directly. I mean, if it was giving technical advice to them, and directly we could say that all the fruit sector is benefiting. We can also talk about 10,000 farmers, and uh, it is expanding day by day because the farmers, they are copying from each other, and they want to follow the example of our mother farmers. Yeah, okay, good. Temperate fruit production requires a high level of knowledge. At this training session, FAO enables farmers to prune apricot trees during the cold and dry season so that they are ready to produce in the hot season. This is um, a traditionally food insecure area because this project is bringing in uh, new varieties of, of temperate fruits uh, which were not being grown before in the region. Uh, they represent a different source of income because there is domestic demand for these fruits, but also a good source of nutrients uh, for the household. <laughs> <laughs> 